In today's show, it's Monday Movers. We're looking at rankings changes, ADP changes over the last seven days for fantasy basketball, including the impact of the Christian Wood signing and the Trey Murphy injury. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. You can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On, Locked On, Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. So, it's Monday. It's time for the Fantasy Barometer. It's time for Monday Movers. Just to look what's changed over the last seven days. Where are guys trending? What impacts have been felt across ADPs and rankings over the last seven days? The next two days worth of shows, I have pre-recorded because I'm just going to be away for a couple of days. So you'll see those shows come out. There's going to be a show on punting and a show on position eligibility. And then we're going to get into second year, third year, fourth year breakouts at the end of the week. Then some fantasy-specific team previews, more mock drafts, all of that stuff is coming. Sleepers and bust stuff is coming as well, as well as the announcement of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Bowl. Be ready for that. If you made the finals of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Bowl last season, also be on the lookout for an email giving you an invitation to come back this season. So the 60 teams that made the Category League final, the 60 teams that made the Points League finals, be on the lookout for an email inviting you back in. The other spots, well, they're going to be open. And there's going to be pretty big competition for them. Stay tuned for information on how to join that. Um, I think that's all the little bits I need to talk about before we get into just seeing what's actually changed across the fantasy basketball landscape over the last seven days. So, Warney. Let's get it on, Gilly. (laughs) All right. Let's have a look at how I have changed things in terms of projections over at Basketball Monster. Some of the big risers. Paul Reed has jumped up a lot in my estimations. You know that ever since, even a little bit before, but ever since we did the Philadelphia 76ers team preview show with Keith Pompey back in the middle of August, I talked to Keith about Nick Nurse playing, uh, not Siakam, playing Paul Reed in this Siakam role. He said, yeah. All right, that's interesting. I said, was there a chance that he could start over PJ Tucker? He's going to get the backup minutes behind Embiid. It's probably at least 20 there. And what if Tucker gets traded and Reed starts? Now, I don't want this to be a situation where Reed starts getting drafted in the pick 100 or pick 105. That's nonsense. Right? Don't do that. Because we, A, we don't know whether he would get those minutes or B, how he would play in a permanent role next to Embiid. But as a last round pick, I've loved it this whole time. Every mock draft I've done, I've told you about this. And I'm going to continue to tell you about it. He needs to be drafted in every single league, Paul Reed. If you want to take him in the second last round, go right ahead. I consider all the last three rounds, last four rounds, even probably last three rounds, equivalent. doesn't matter. So take him if you want. It might work out, it might not. But I have just given, again, more of the stuff that keeps leaking out about Paul Reed makes me think there's going to be a much larger role there for him. You'll notice there are a few Pelicans on this list because obviously we had the injury to Trey Murphy the third. I don't know why I called him that because that's not his name. It's Kenneth Murphy the third. There is no just Ken. Yeah. Trey Murphy with a knee injury out until at least mid-November. I'm going to guess it's closer to mid-December. So a lot of guys bumped up in my projections. Najee Marshall up 54 spots, up 49 in minus one ranks. Jordan Hawkins went up 35 spots. He is not a draftable 12-team league player, nor is Najee Marshall. He went up 35 spots, Hawkins, and 31 in minus one. And Herbalife Jones went up 10 spots in uh, regular rankings and five in minus one. You might say, why did Herb only jump up that much? Well, it is harder to jump up a bigger amount when you're higher in the rankings to begin with. I don't think that Herb becomes his high-priority guy. As I've said many times, Herb was barely a rosterable player last season without Zion and without Ingram. And yeah, no Murphy's there, but his production from last season was probably going to take a pretty significant hit from where it was. And now it just gets to jump back up maybe closer to that area. He doesn't just, wow, it's going to be a huge... He had the situation last season. 
and didn't take advantage of it. So he has jumped up, but it doesn't jump up into a must roster scenario. The other guy that's jumped up here is Zeke Naji, up 12 spots and then 16 spots in my minus one rankings. Why? I was listening to Matt Moore talking a little bit about the Nuggets and saying, well, they're going to at least initially try and really rely upon Naji to play. Now, Naji does have theoretically a good fantasy game. Maybe he shoots threes, he can block some shots, he can rebound. Their depth is pretty rough there with Vlako Chanchar out. I still think Peyton Watson's the better player, but I just gave a little bit of a tweak to Naji's minutes. Now, he's still not remotely a 12 or 14 team league guy, but I just moved him a couple of extra minutes and that pushed him up those spots. And the other one who wasn't ranked because he wasn't on a team is the Crucifix, Christian Wood. I don't believe and I never believed that Christian Wood would start. Jovan Buhar came out and said he won't. It'll be Rui Hachimura starting, which I actually don't agree with either. And there's, you know, Sorg Anthony Davis is going to play a few minutes at center. That's all well and good, right? That doesn't mean that Wood's playing 30 minutes. Playing Christian Wood at, playing Christian Wood at center when you've got Anthony Davis on the court is malpractice coaching. It's ridiculous. Wood is a disgusting defender. You're better off playing Vanderbilt at center than having Wood at center. Look, Wood can shoot. He's going to play 20-odd minutes or so, I would guess. But he doesn't have this clear path to 30 minutes. What it does, though, and we'll talk about this in a second, Jackson Hayes, get his garbage ass out of there. In fact, we haven't jacked anyone for a while. Get that garbage out of here! He's trash, so he'll have his minutes reduced. But Vanderbilt, Hachimura, they're all going to get minutes still. So it takes a little bit off them, but it doesn't mean Wood's playing 30. He is still worthy of a later round pick. I would not go inside the top 100 for Christian Wood. No chance. Last couple of rounds. And his value will rise when Davis or LeBron is out. But finding enough minutes when those two are healthy, it's just unlikely, I think. So he's, a, he's bumped up from, from nowhere into around the 120, 150 range in that last, last three round area, which is totally cool. Go and grab him in that spot. But don't expect huge amounts from uh, the crucifix, I don't think. Today's episode is brought to you by the legends over at Ibotta. You're taking your vacation, you're paying for it, you've been planning, but all the things you've got to buy, necessities, chargers, adapters, face, skincare, shampoo, body wash, whatever it is, you're spending that money. So why don't you get something back in return? That's where Ibotta comes in. The average Ibotta user earns $120 per year which could co- co- cover ugh, cover the cost of an entire shopping trip. It could cover a flight. It could cover a dinner at a nice restaurant when you're away. Instead of getting worthless points, you get cash back either straight into your bank account, straight into your PayPal, or in the form of gift cards. So right now, Ibotta is just giving you five bucks. Our listeners get five bucks straight away just for trying Ibotta if you use the code locked on, or sorry, if you use the code locked when you register. Go to the App Store or the Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app and use that code LOCKED. That's Ibotta, I-B-O-T-T-A, in the Google Play or the App Store, and use the code LOCKED. Let us look at some other rank changes. So on the flip side of the signing of Christian Wood, a lot of Lakers copped a hit. The artist formerly known as Torian Prince dropped a lot. In fact, he dropped 69 spots. Giggity! And 56 in minus one. Why, Josh? Him and Christian Wood don't play the same position. 100% 100% true, 100% true, but but getting Wood into the mix, into the rotation means that fewer minutes for Vanderbilt at center, meaning if Vanderbilt has to then push a little bit more to power forward, it means fewer minutes for Rui Hachimura at power forward and more at the three and fewer minutes for Prince at the four. So he pushes to the three where Rui's taken a few extra minutes. It's all a trickle down effect. So Prince loses a lot. Now Prince wasn't a 12 team league player, but he was a nice deeper league guy, but he loses some. So does Jackson Hayes, who's down 68 spots and 64 and minus one, who was going to be the primary backup to Anthony Davis until they figured out that Colin Castleton's a better player, but now he won't even get that opportunity to show that he sucks. So Christian Wood will be the backup center or Vanderbilt, however you want to phrase it. So Hayes goes from being someone who you might even consider as a stashy guy in a weekly league waiting for a Davis injury to not even that player. I dropped Vanderbilt down 30 spots. 24 spots in minus one. Again, just losing two to three minutes because of the presence of Wood impacts guys. And the same goes with Gabe Vincent. Obviously a very different position. But when there might have been situations where they'd play a Vincent, Reeves, Russell combination with LeBron and Davis at the four and the five, if you are committed to squeezing minutes into Wood, then somebody has to miss out. And if Wood plays and Davis is out there, LeBron moves down to the three more and he can't play those three guard lineups as much. So Vincent moved down 23 spots. 
23 spots. Again, it might be two minutes off their projected playing time, but that's what happens. Ken Murphy dropped down 19 spots. Trey, 15 in, in minus one rankings. I just These are per game as well. The reason that I dropped Trey Murphy down in his projections is that when he comes back, he won't just be hitting the ground running, playing 32 minutes. He might play 26, 27. Herbal will have established himself most likely in the starting lineup. So it'll be a bit of a way to ease him back in. And then overall, like the minutes will ramp up as the season goes on, but he won't be able to hit the ground running, getting 30 a night straight away. So that's why Trey's numbers drop down. I still think that Trey is a fantastic late round pick. There is no just Ken. Assuming you have IL spots. Take him late, stash him there. Hopefully your league has multiple IL Plus slots on Yahoo or IR on ESPN or IR on Fantrax. Hopefully you have multiple of them. You should. You grab him late and you stash him there. It might be the case that he doesn't return until after Christmas. That's totally true. And if you need to drop, you drop. But he does still have upside, so grab him really late and see where it goes. And then, of course, because of all these other reasons, Austin Reeves drops 14 spots. Just losing a little bit of usage because Christian Wood's a relatively high usage player. So there have to be shots that come from somewhere. He had a little bit of struggle there at the World Cup towards the end. And just another guy who's going to have the ball in his hands, which again, is going to be poor coaching if it happens, but Wood can't help himself. It just impacts a little bit there of Reeves. And when he doesn't have any like high defensive stats to buoy a loss in usage, it, it does hurt. So he has dropped down 14 spots there in my regular rankings and 10 in the minus one format. Let's look at Yahoo ADP changes. I, I didn't expect to see this, but the number one riser in Yahoo ADP over the last seven days, is actually the speaker, Keynote George in Utah, up seven spots. Now, he's still just a last-round pick, but I have said this many times. I think there are going to be very few rookies who start opening night. Hardly any. Victor? Maybe Scoot? Probably it. I don't know who else is going to start. Miller might not. Scoot, maybe. The Thompsons, almost definitely not. Jarris Walker, probably not. Kulabali, absolutely not. Taylor Hendricks, no way. Anthony Black, no. Derek Lively, no. Kaysan Wallace, no. Jordan Hawkins, no. Grady Dick, no. Kobe Bufkin, no. Keontae George, maybe. Because their point guard is Chris Dunn, yuck. Colin Sexton, yuck. Talon Horton Tucker, yuck. Maybe he can earn the spot. I have, he, again, it's the perfect, let's take a flyer on Keontae George in the last round. I don't understand this one. Killian Hayes is up five spots in ADP. Why? What on earth has transpired to make you think that Killian Hayes will play over Kate Cunningham, Jaden Ivey, or Monte Morris? He shouldn't be drafted at all, let alone moving up. The big ragu, Dante DiVincenzo, moved up four spots. Again, absolutely no reason for that. He's not really a draftable 12-team league player. He's okay if you really want to fill a specialist hole towards the end, but no. Jarris Walker, up three uh, spots in ADP as well. Hello. And while I would say there's almost no chance he's the opening night starter at Power Forward, I don't have a problem drafting him with that last pick because if he is, getting some defensive upside stats is worth it. Jabari Smith, up two spots. He keeps rising in the, uh, in the ADP numbers. Ah, Smitty. I love getting him late. He really did start to come on at the end of last season. I think his role is relatively secure. Really like him as a last pick. And then Jonas Valanciunas. Jonas Vassal Inuansas. He's ranked really low on Yahoo. I'm not particularly high on him, but yeah, when you're talking 11th round or 10th round for Valanciunas, it's totally good to get him there. And it makes sense that his ADP is rising. Now, be careful. If it starts to push inside the top 100 or top 90, I would definitely be more skeptical of that. Let's look at some guys who have fallen over on Yahoo's ADP. Number one there is Jeremy Sohan. Sohan now. I, I like Sohan as a last round pick. I don't know whether he's going to start or what's going to happen, but second round guys often get that big bump and it's never reflected in ranks or rarely reflected in ranks or ADP. So that's one to watch. Trey Murphy dropped four spots. Absolutely reasonable. He should have dropped. And that's a great way to tell whether there is a level of reliability in ADP, I think, is looking at when news happens, has the ADP reacted? And while I do shit on Yahoo sometimes and ESPN a lot, when we get to ESPN later, you'll see Trey Murphy's fallen there as well. So at least some of the drafters and some of the, the numbers have a little bit of reliability to them. Sasha Veslenkov dropped down three spots. Yeah, okay, cool. Like he's not really a draftable guy. Great A Dick, the, pros, the, the prestige penis. He's down three spots, not a draftable player. 
nor is um, Anthony Black, who was just way too high initially. Mr. Black. Again, I don't mind taking upside swings on Dick or Black at you know the last round, but I just think that the likelihood of those two playing enough minutes is minuscule. I would say the same thing for a man Thompson. Can I get but even if he if he plays twenty, he might have enough. Think of the way that Alex Caruso can impact a fantasy team in twenty three minutes. And then Thompson probably can do the same thing, even though his ADP has fallen two spots. But I would definitely take a men ahead of Black, Dick, Vezenkov, probably even Sohan. Maybe not Sohan, but maybe in those last rounds. I would definitely be more interested in uh, in taking Dick. Uh, sorry, in taking a men. ESPN ADP changes. Not many changes at ESPN, very small changes. But a name that always seems to be coming up over on ESPN is, uh, is Clay Thompson. I think he's talking to you. Actually, that's not the Clay Thompson sound. This is the Clay Thompson sound. Ni hao. Ni hao. Yeah, Clay is up one spot. He does have value. Points and threes are there. We hope that the playoff meltdown isn't real and doesn't impact him moving forward, but that's fine. The other one is, in fact, Mr. Thompson. I think he's talking to you. Asar Thompson's up one spot on ESPN ADP. Probably has more of a shot of impacting standard leagues than a men this season. We don't know whether he's going to start or not. I think he's got a better chance of starting than a men, though. Interesting, Franz Wagner moves up a spot. Okay. Came back. Germany won the World Cup. Congratulations to Germany, by the way. Maybe that's a World Cup bump there. I don't really... I don't really understand why Kyle Lowry moved up. Double cheeked up on a Thursday afternoon. Definitely wouldn't be interested in drafting him. And while I can give praise to... ESPN for some of their ADP stuff and the draft is being smart. Not really sure why Rui Hachimura would move up one spot after they sign Christian Wood. I'm not interested in drafting Rui Hachimura at all. I guess, I guess part of that is the news that he's going to start. It doesn't matter. He's a bad fantasy player. And the last one is Dennis Schroeder, who's moved up a spot. Schroeder is the MVP, obviously, of FIBA. I, I projected him to be the starter over Gary Trent in Toronto as the point guard because, honestly, I don't think Scotty Barnes is a point guard. We'll see what they do. But even if, if he starts or comes off the bench, it's probably minimum 28 minutes for Schroeder. Maybe he's a 34 minutes as a starter. He could easily be a 30-minute guy off the bench. I think he's worth drafting in the final round. So I like that his ADP is moving up there. The drops over on ESPN, well, it is Ken Murphy who drops down three spots. That's what makes sense. I don't really understand why Brandon Ingram dropped down three spots in their ADP. They saw Murphy go down. They went, oh, we better drop Ingram down. Now, I know he had some issues at the World Cup. So I think the rise of Wagner, the rise of Schroeder, and the drop of Ingram is definitely World Cup related because Paulo Banquero also dropped two spots on ESPN ADP, which, again, is pretty reactive based on something that probably doesn't matter. Sterling Henderson moved down three spots as well. Jesus, God, Sterling. That's good. We want Scoot to drop further. We want to get him late. I guess people are a bit worried about Lillard not being traded. Happily grab him late. And the same with uh, Anthony Simons, who dropped down two spots. Got him, Red. So I'm going to guess that Scoot and Simons dropping two is because there's been no movement on the Lillard front. And the other one there to drop is the delicate dancer, Alperen Sengun. It's a delicate dance in just 17 steps. And irrespective of what his ADP is, I am a little worried about Shengun. Not in terms of the player, just in terms of how he is used. I'm, I'm a little concerned about that. And then let's look at the moves over on Fantrax. Some gigantic moves there. Joshie Richardson up 22 spots. Now, he was pretty low. I think Richardson's going to start in Miami, irrespective of a Lillard trade. Is he, is he got enough upside to be a standard league late round pick? I'm not sure about that. But I know he's going to be worth using, especially a waiver streamer sort of a player. And the ADP reflects that. I didn't really expect to see Larry Nance move up 19 spots as a result of the Trey Murphy injury. That doesn't really make any sense at all, but he has. John Kaminga's moved up nine spots. I wouldn't be touching him in 12-team leagues. Andrew Nempard up nine spots. That's a deeper league one. And then Paul Reed up two. Absolutely, I'm behind that. And Benny Simmons up one spot. Both of those should be rising in their ADP numbers. I think there are some promising things from both players. In terms of Fantrax drops, Anthony Black is down 14 spots. I don't see there's any need to draft him. Caleb Martin down 12. He's not. Uh, he's got no high upside. He is a low floor, probably low ceiling 
guy that might come off the bench for Miami. I don't know. I just don't see any interest in 12s. Derek Lively down 10 spots. Yeah, he shouldn't be drafted. Peyton Watson down 10. That I don't really get because he should have only been, been drafted in deeper leagues and would have thought that his value may have risen. That's something to keep an eye on. ESPN bumped Kyle Lowry up. Fantrax bumped him down 10 and bumping him down 10 is the correct move. And then there's Derek, not Derek, there's Chris Dunn who moved down nine spots as well. Now Dunn might be the starting point guard in Utah. He also might not be in the rotation at all. I don't know how they're going to use him. I definitely wouldn't be drafting you know, Lowry, Dunn, Watson, Lively, Martin, or Black in 12-team leagues. All of their ADP numbers dropping makes complete sense to me. And that's your quick little Monday Movers show. Reminder, tomorrow we're doing a show on punting. We already recorded it. Doing a show on position eligibilities on Wednesday. And then after that, we're going to be cranking out tons of shows. So much stuff. Be on the lookout for a Locked On Fantasy Basketball Bowl announcement, nine categories and points leagues. Check your emails if you made the finals of those in the coming days because I'm going to send an email out to you. And follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app and on YouTube. Thumb it up and leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.